going on everybody? Welcome back to MK Motorsports. Today we will be changing out the internal wiring harness on the 4L80 transmission that's in my truck. Uh, I've just recently rebuilt this transmission and everything was good and then I started noticing a huge puddle of oil underneath while I was doing the suspension and whatnot. Uh, crawled up underneath there, started looking at it, trying to find out where it's coming from, I'm thinking, thinking it's a seal on the tail housing, uh, seal on the, where the drive shaft yoke goes in. Uh, and I started looking over, it's on the driver's side. Well, there's not a whole lot of places that can leak over there on the driver's side. Uh, turns out the wiring harness pass through where the main harness from the ECM connects to it, uh, it is leaking through the pins. Um, not a huge, I haven't seen this very often. I've seen it a few times at work for stuff running through a, a wiring harness or something like that. But anyway, what's going on is there's your pins for the harness. On the back side, this is exposed to transmission fluid inside the pan. So most of the time, this is all sealed up really well, things like that. You've got an O-ring right here. And yes, you know, during the rebuild, this O-ring comes with your basic rebuild kit. And that was installed uh, twice, actually. So I don't feel like the O-ring is the issue, but this is a wore out connector. Uh, I feel like it's probably been in and out of this transmission about three or four times. Uh, the transmission connector itself may be bad, it may be cracked somewhere, I don't see it, and it could be seeping through the pins. Anyway, regardless of the situation, I've got a brand new harness, and we're going to get that put in today. Uh, right now I've got the transmission draining, um, so other than that, we'll get started. <laughs> discolored and everything like there um, just you know a couple connections and everything um, as you can see in the video it's just extremely easy to pull this thing out and like I said here's the new one brand new uh, o-ring and everything like that um, one thing I did want to show was 
the tool that I was using. So as I was under there, I'm sure you noticed that I used a piece of tubing to dislodge the plug going through the case. Uh, piece like this. This is an inch and a half OD piece of exhaust tube. You can get it like AutoZone, O'Reilly's, any place to sell some of that just uh, on the shelf exhaust tubing. I just cut a little piece on that and it actually has just enough movement to get a hold of those tabs and push them in and you can kind of work this thing out a lot easier. Um, there is a special tool for it, but it's like 50 bucks. And I was just like, I'm, I'm not paying 50 bucks for something that I can kind of come up with something myself. So that's what I've used in the past to get those things out. Uh, sometimes just a, a firm dead blow hammer, just a soft tap, and sometimes those things will just dislodge on their own. Uh, but anyway, that was one of the little tools that I had to show you. I'm fixing to get back under the truck. I'm going to show you uh, proper dipstick markings for the 4L80. Uh, I see this on a lot of forums, questions, things like that. I've been looking at a, a lot of the guys that I uh, take some advice from on transmission builds. This is what they recommend. Warm transmission fluid, truck running, the level needs to be at the bottom of the transmission. That, that pan rail where your pan bolts up to, right there is where the appropriate level is. And I think for the longest time I've been running a lot of my transmissions low on this. So anyway, I will uh, crawl back under the truck. I'll give you a, a quick, quick look-see, and that way you get kind of an idea. So if you ever have your pan off, change the filter, change the fluid, anything, uh, excuse me, anything like that, um, be sure to just take a second, look where that dipstick tube is, look where it's coming through at, and just put a mark there, like get a Dremel or a Scribe or something, just put a mark, and that gets you right there in the ballpark. So as you can see, as I'm trying to bring this thing into focus, um, it's kind of hard to see underneath there, but um, there'll be a spot where you can kind of see the two fill dots on my dipstick, and just about three quarters of an inch above that is the mark I've made, and that should be even with the, uh, the bottom rail where your pan bolts up to, that way you can... Uh, you know, that's the proper level for your dipstick. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this whole thing up. Um, install went pretty much like the, like I figured it would. I mean, the old one came out real well. The new one went in real well. Um, everything looked good. It was a little tight on the uh, forward for the uh, lockup solenoid, uh, but it, it did seem to work. Um, I was always curious about how much oil would actually come out of the, uh, the pan after you drained it. So after I drained it and everything, I uh, had kind of a graduated graduated measured five gallon bucket that I got from Lowe's or something like that. So I just dumped all the used oil in there and it held approximately eight quarts, about two gallons. So I know that's all dependent on what kind of like oil pan you have or anything like that. But um, I do think I had my transmission a little bit over full to begin with. so. The stuff that's put all over the ground and whatnot. Um, so probably probably throw seven quarts in it just to see what it does, see what it looks like, and everything. Uh, go take it for a spin. Make sure everything's shifting like it's supposed to. Come back, check the oil. Make sure that's all good. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna let this thing drip overnight. That way I can clean it all up later on. Um, but anyway, closing thoughts on the whole thing. Uh, Simple install, real easy, 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. Um, always get your bolts started back up to uh, before you start hammering them all in. That way, once you get one of them seated, you know you have you always have that one bolt that'll just hang up or won't quite go in. Then you have to loosen everything back up. Anyway, just get them all started and then go from there. Um, I did reuse my filter. That filter has maybe 10 miles on it, so I'm not gonna go spend another. 20 30 dollars on a filter um, that one's fine the fluid that came out of that was absolutely pink i absolutely just hate wasting that uh, it was all brand new fluid um, but you know that's kind of the that's always kind of the name of the game i could have collected it in a clean container and put it back in but i've had i've had some tranny problems with this particular one here lately and i'm just not gonna not gonna chance it so old fluid out new fluid going back in but anyway, that wraps everything up. Um, that is pretty much the end of 
all the stuff that I need to do to the truck. I've got the, uh, the pinion shims are in, the brackets built, um, everything looks good. I mean, the truck, I went out and drove it around just a pinch. Uh, everything seems to be in good working order. Nothing fell off. But uh, now the good stuff is fixing to kick off. Stay tuned. The next video, we are going to reveal what the big up-and-coming project is going to be. Anyway, like, share, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, help me out. Um, I don't know how the algorithm things work, but anyway, this is something I do for fun, but uh, help a guy out. Y'all have a good one. Catch you later.